Good morning, Momos. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, well, we're not quite sure what it's gonna be yet. We'll know more in a little bit. It's either going to be a celebratory, what I'm doing to prepare for my home birth video, or a, I'm no longer having a home birth video and I'll be at the hospital birth video. <laughs> so we're about to find out. We're about to head to go get an ultrasound to check on my placenta because it was low lying and has been for the past three times that I've gotten ultrasounds. Um, and so we're gonna go check. I'm 36 weeks and three days. So I'm praying, praying, praying. I actually do feel pretty sick and confident. Supposedly, if it still hasn't moved out of the way, we can check back, I think like just continue checking. But basically my midwife was like, if it hasn't moved by now um, to a certain point, point a certain centimeter or whatever we should just go ahead and set up your hospital birth I can still technically have vaginal birth but would just have to do it at a hospital which is better news than I thought because I thought it was like literally straight to a c-section so praise god for that but again I'm feeling very hopeful I'm feeling confident let's go do my makeup first and then Get an ultrasound done. Here we go. You got this, Lord. I praise you before I receive an answer, and I praise you after I receive an answer, no matter what that answer is. You are worthy, Lord. Amen. All right, makeup on. It's not my best makeup job, I will say. My forehead's looking strange, but luckily Luca doesn't care. Well, you guys, today's video we're celebrating because the title of this video is What I'm Doing to Prepare for My Home Birth! <laughs> just letting the cat out of the bag. We just left the hospital and we had great news and we are praising the Lord. Wow. <laughs> Seriously, you guys, man, it, it's just that feeling and there's obviously way worse things there is that that we but we're sitting there in the hospital room she's you, moving her magic wand <laughs> the, the the news of she could say the placenta is not in a good spot mm -hmm. and all of your plans and preparation and money for the home birth is out the window so to speak because mm -hmm. now you gotta have a hospital like you just don't know and you feel so helpless but that is a good place to be sometimes because ultimately who is in control of our lives? Is it us or is it God? Yep. That's all you're gonna get from me, a little sermonette. <laughs> now we celebrate <laughs> with water and kale tonic. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> That's a good one. Describe the flavor. Pure heaven. Uh, <laughs> we got green apple. We got lemon. We got kale. And I think that's it. It's really good. <laughs> it's really good. All right, well, hello, guys. It's clearly, well, I don't know clearly, but it's a different day from when I last filmed. I just wanted to really soak in the celebratory day slash moment of my placenta moving on up and out of the way. And so I did not film anymore that day, but we're back and we're ready to show you everything that I've been doing to prepare for a home birth. I have been doing a lot, you guys. <laughs> I feel like for the past three years, I've been mentally um, preparing for a home birth, but obviously 
only the past nine months have I been like preparing physically uh, with all the stuff and like my body. Um, but yeah, I don't even know where to begin. Knowing my personality, I can sometimes be overly confident, <laughs> which is not always a bad thing because it's I've been able to succeed or get things done that some people wouldn't get done because they just didn't have like any confidence to even try and so it's not a bad thing that I'm overly confident sometimes <laughs> but it can be a bad thing when I'm like in the moment and I'm like oh my goodness why 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 did I think that I could do this why did I <laughs> do this or attempt this whatever so I've really 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 been trying to just continually humble myself when it comes to having a natural home birth because I don't want to be naive or overly confident and be like I'm gonna crush this and I'm not, I will not feel pain at all like I don't want to be dumb or naive <laughs> but I also don't want to feed into the fears of like, this is gonna be so horrible and hard and I'm gonna regret every second of it. Like, I don't wanna do that either. So I'm trying to find that balance there of like, this is gonna be beautiful and incredibly hard, but worth every second, so. I shared on Instagram, I like made a little piece in pregnancy print out PDF downloadable thing. It's like $6 on um, our website, thepaulamorganshow.com. I made this because I wanted to be able to print out just like Bible verses, encouragement phrases to hang up, print out, whatever, do whatever I wanted with them during my actual birth. So what I did with that, I made this board. Oh, hello, Squishy. Um, that has, this is a little case in a profile picture. I printed out some of my phrases or Bible verses, whatever, from my little PDF and put them here. And then I got these things, collage photos from Amazon. I'll try to link them below. And just put them together and I will have this just probably set up like this on the floor in our bedroom because that is where we will be birthing baby boy. Um, I'll kind of show you the layout of what it's gonna look like. So that's just one little thing that I've done for, in preparation for my home birth. Not anything huge, but very cute and pretty and something that I'll be able to look at and just bring hopefully serotonin, oxytocin, happy hormones to help with the labor process. <laughs> so when you're working with a midwife that is going to deliver your baby at home, they will all I'm sure have like a birth kit and supply list that you have to purchase and have it by 37 weeks. I got all of my stuff pretty much by 35 weeks because, you know, I like to be prepared, I guess. <laughs> it's just literally a long list of items that you're supposed to have, like two sets of bed sheets to fit your bed and pillowcases, plastic to cover your bed, duct tape, two to three plastic trash bags, hand soap, six to eight bath towels, and 10 to 12 washcloths, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that is all stuff that I've been compiling. There's also like a kit that they have you buy. If you type in your midwife's name, like their kit that they like with all their items and stuff that they want are in there and it's like, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 bucks, I don't know. But it comes with all kinds of things like these little pad things that you can lay down on the bed. If you're gonna have a water birth, you have to get a liner for your midwife's pool unless you're planning on buying your own pool. Um, I didn't feel like doing that so I just got the liner for her pool that I'm gonna borrow. Handy dandy fishnet. Can you guess what this is for? 
I'll tell you. <laughs> um, it comes with like gloves, surgical sponges, you know, all this random little stuff that she may or may not need for me. She suggested I get motherwort tincture. Tincture. I have a giant garden hose <laughs> to go from our shower head to the tub. It's actually way too long. I didn't need that long of a hose, but my sister had it and I was like, can I borrow that? Cause I don't feel like buying a hose. Um, so she brought that over recently. I have a basket, which will be filled with lots of towels. And my midwife just said, you know, you might want to come in and out of the tub. It's a lot, you guys. It's a lot of stuff to have. Something else that I've been doing is creating a birth plan. Now, my midwife already knows like all the things that I do and don't want done after Luca has been born. So I don't really need to write that out. My birth plan is more just like details of like what I want my mom, Paul, and Caroline, who's going to be acting as my doula to do. <laughs> to do during early labor, during active labor, and during the time after Luca has been born. Um, just, it's really all just common sense stuff, but I'm the type of person that I like, I personally like details, so I'm writing out, uh, uh, not a ton, but <laughs> a little bit. Little simple things like making sure my labor cart's in the bedroom, bringing in the basket of snacky snacks. And like a lot of these things I will do with them. It's not like I'm just gonna be like, peace out, you guys get it already. And a lot of this depends on like what time of the night it is or what time of the day it is. If it's like three in the morning and I go into early labor, my midwife has instructed me to just rest, rest, rest as much as I can in early labor, no matter what time of the day it is, um, because I'm gonna need my strength. So honestly, I probably won't do too much. <laughs> That's my birth plan. Okay, so let me like show you guys the room and where things will be set up. Not that you guys probably care that much, but I don't know. I just feel like a video like this is helpful. I would have appreciated watching a video like this um, as I was like preparing for birthing my child. All right, so here's my bedroom. Ignore the plant that desperately needs to be watered. <laughs> So what we're thinking is we'll be moving this dresser out of the room for the night or whatever um, day, whatever time it is that I have Luca. Um, and then our the birthing pool will go right here. And then, you know, I have easy access to our bathroom and to the bed as well. I'll probably bring a chair in here so that someone can sit that bouncy ball that I can bounce on in Luca's room if I want. Uh, all this stuff will be somewhere. It's just gonna be kind of like as we set up, figuring it out, but yeah, that's about it as far as like preparing for the birth, like in a logistical sense with items and whatnot. <laughs> now let's go talk about what I've been doing spiritually, physically, mentally. All right, a little change of scenery. This is never a bad thing, especially when it's in Luca's cute little room. <laughs> so, it's been really beneficial for me to have had like Bethany Beal had a home birth and so I've been talking to her. Um, my good friend Sam had a home birth so I've been talking to her. There's a lady in my home group who had a home birth and, and actually was her baby was delivered by the same midwife that I'm using. And so just having those people to talk to and learn from is just been I think huge for me because one, too much information is overwhelming and I was definitely getting to that point of like having watched way too many videos and read way too many articles and books and yada yada and it's like, okay, 
no. That has been very help helpful for me, specifically preparing for a water birth because both, all three of the ladies that I've been talking to all had water births. And so they're able to give me just a lot of good advice and encouragement and just reiterating that my body was made to do this and knows what to do. As many books and classes and whatever that I could take, like in the end, my body's gonna kick in, just know what to do. And I really do believe that. And also just talking to my midwife and getting her thoughts and advice on just like, what does a contraction feel like? Am I really gonna be able to do this? <laughs> yada, yada, yada. That's been very helpful, mentally, spiritually, physically. I will say physically, it's not like I'm doing crazy stretches every single day or Kegel exercises five times a day for 30 minutes. <laughs> like I'm not doing anything intense. I'm still trying to be active in that I try to work out at least three times a week, which I've told you guys this before, but my workouts these days are just me going to the pool and walking laps in the pool, <laughs> which feels great. I am not that worried about that. I am seeing a chiropractor weekly and she's been amazing and it's like keeping me nice and loose and working on my hips and my pelvic area. And I think that that will be very beneficial. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Again, it's like we put all this pressure on ourselves to go above and beyond in preparing physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever. And it's like in the end, our bodies are just gonna do what God made them to do. I do understand that there can be complications sometimes, but I'm specifically speaking to women who are gonna be having home births. The amount of like hospital transfers from home births is so, so small. And I think that's for a reason. I think it's because our bodies know what to do. <laughs> and it's kind of just, yeah, that's how it goes. So I don't know, as far as like, Am I afraid of the pain? Am I afraid of tearing? Am I afraid that I'm gonna get to a point and be like, I can't do this, take me to the hospital? <laughs> Not really. I think that I can see myself probably, possibly having a moment of being like, what the heck was I thinking? <laughs> but also I'm the type of person that when I am determined to do something, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> That's just a part of my personality. And it's interesting because I'm not determined to do a lot of things. <laughs> so it's like, if I'm determined, you know your girl's gonna do it because she's not determined to battle a whole lot. <laughs> so the fact that I'm very determined to just have a, a home birth and deliver Luca here, like it's gonna happen. And that doesn't mean that I'm not gonna feel pain or whatever, but also like I'm very determined to not give in to that pain. And I'm encouraged just by the fact that it really is a lot of it is a mental game. And I feel like for the past, we'll just say six years of me being married to Paul, six plus years, I feel mentally so much stronger than how I felt seven years ago or whatever. So yes, I'm not super afraid, but I'm not gonna be naive and think like, oh, this will be a breeze. Like, no, I think it's gonna be the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my entire life, but it's gonna be so beautiful and so powerful and I'm pumped. <laughs> Spiritually, I feel good. I have been Praying over my labor, here's the thing you guys, there are people out there that pray about something like without ceasing they pray about something that they're going through or pray over their future husband every single day or pray over their husband every single day. Paul and I are not like that. <laughs> it's interesting that neither of us are like this. Um, we're both prayerful. We both pray daily. We both have prayerful hearts, but like to say that like 
specifically about my placenta. I didn't pray over my placenta moving every single day that I, from finding out that it needed to move. It was just like when it was placed on my heart, I lifted it up. When I first found out that like this was possibly going to be an issue, I lifted it up. I put my trust in the Lord and then I moved on with my life. And I don't know if that's like, I don't think that that's a bad thing. I don't think that it's an amazing thing. I think it's just a thing. It's just who I am. I am not the type of person that is going to go to God every single day and pray repetitively over something over and over and over again. I'm, I just, I don't know. I, I've tried that. I've tried doing that for certain things and I'm like, this doesn't feel authentic to me. I just feel like it's a robotic thing that I'm like forcing myself to do. And so I think that what matters is that when we're praying, whether it's you literally, I lift up my placenta problem one time, that my heart behind it is like, Father, I trust you. I'm giving this to you. I, I like my heart is right behind it. And I feel like when I pray about something every single day, it's like, I'm just doing this because I feel like I need to do this or, or I feel pressure to do this. And I know that there are plenty of people out there who pray every single day about something over and over and over again and like their heart behind it is super solid. So don't get me wrong, I'm not saying like people who pray over stuff every single day is a bad thing. It's not. <laughs> But I say all of that to say, I have not like prayed over my labor or my birth or even like my son, Luca, every single day. I pray for it often, very often. And my heart behind every prayer that I pray is very much genuine and raw and coming to the Lord and believing that he's hearing me and responding to me. So spiritually, I feel good. I feel like I've prayed many things over my labor. I've prayed for very specific things of how long my whole labor from beginning to end of him coming out into this world is. I've prayed for generic things and specific things and I pray for those things often but not every single day and maybe not even every single week. Um, and I feel absolutely okay about that. My prayer is always that his will would be done. And so just continuing to pray that his will would be done in this labor, in this delivery of his gift to me and Paul. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you guys so much for your prayers over my placenta. Like, I do not take that for granted. And I know that some of you all prayed over my placenta every single day. I don't take that lightly. You guys are amazing and I'm so thankful for this community. It's just amazing. And some of you guys have sent me like the sweetest gifts for Luca ever. I opened one, I opened two, you can see it back there. It's an embroidered like little stitching of mushrooms and then next to it says I will trust my savior Jesus which is the song that I have been singing over Luca every day. <laughs> That's one thing I have done every day since he has been in me growing um, is sing that and like just the fact that someone was so thoughtful to do that and send that. I, ugh. You guys are amazing. I was crying, okay? And also to every single one of you who purchased something off of the baby registry, like you guys are incredible, incredible. It's, I can't wrap my mind around just the kindness and generosity of you all. It's been mind boggling. So thank you guys so much for walking through this journey with me. Even if you are not pregnant, even if you are nowhere near being married or pregnant or anything, like, <sighs> love you guys so much. Thank you for watching this video. Have a great rest of your day and remember that Jesus is the answer. Bye you guys.